As we have seen in the first lesson in uh, 1923, uh, Gertrude Bell founded a symbol. The Iraq Museum can be considered as a, a valuable repository of a compassed for a country that, unfortunately, experiences internal division still nowadays. Therefore, the Iraq Museum in Baghdad is a place unique in the world, not only for archaeologists. It is a window on the past of Mesopotamia and the human history with an amazing variety of artifacts ranging from prehistoric times to the Ottoman period. As already mentioned in the previous lesson about the Iraq Museum, one of the biggest crimes committed involving Iraqi antiquities occurred in April 2003, when the Iraq Museum was broken into and sacked. Around 15,000 objects were stolen from galleries and repositories. After this catastrophe, great efforts for surveying, searching and recovering looted antiquities were started by the international scientific community. In 2003, it seemed natural to Italian archaeologists, architects and specialists to do their best to give back to the Iraqi people what had recently been stolen and outraged, the conscience of the Iraqi past, intervening by trying to reopen the National Museum of Iraq. Thanks to a long-lasting relationship with the Iraqi authorities, Italy was able to intervene immediately after the looting. The project of the rearrangement of part of the Iraq Museum was planned in 2003 by the Italian Ministries of Heritage and Culture and of Foreign Affairs, together with the Centro Scavi di Torino, Monumenta Orientalia of Rome, and, of course, the State Board of Antiquities and Heritage of Iraq. First, the looted and irreparably damaged laboratory of the Iraq Museum were moved to a different location in the State Board of Antiquities and Heritage compound. In March 2004, the new laboratories, completely furnished and equipped uh, with the base instruments and materials, were inaugurated. Training courses for restorers and museum officials have been organized first in Baghdad and then in Amman and Rome. At the same time, a collaboration with Italian and international police allowed to recovery of uh, more than 2,000 items stolen from the museums or from archaeological sites. As the most important artifacts of Mesopotamian culture are kept in the Iraq Museum, not only in the exhibition halls, but especially in its immense repository, it is easy to figure out the cultural and social importance of the intervention. Although planned since 2003, the works in the museum could start only 2006 for safety reasons. There were numerous logistical difficulties encountered during the first year of work, as for example the lack of electricity or the reduced opening hours of the museum galleries. Since the end of 2007, the situation has improved and the work has proceeded faster. Given the difficulty of staying for a long time in Baghdad at the time, and the importance of involving directly the Iraqis in these requalification works, it was chosen to entrust the work to a local enterprise, coordinating the project from Italy and planning regular inspection in Iraq. Moreover, well aware of the difficulties in dealing with such a complex project, the decision was to focus on simple and feasible intervention. The work involved the two Assyrian monumental galleries, the Islamic gallery together with the central courtyard. The two Assyrian galleries were renovated with a different layout and a new effective artificial lighting. In the Great Assyrian Gallery, after the restoration and the cleaning up of the sculptures, the reliefs from Khorsabad were placed along the walls of the room, recalling their original location. Similarly, above the two monumental human-headed bulls, the guardians of the main entrances of Assyrian palaces, an arched covering was recreated according to the original architectural model. In fact, these monumental reliefs, each one weighing around 3-4 tons, were originally lined up and exposed 
without any connection with the architecture of the hull. Then, we created lateral walls to narrow the hull, conveying the effects of a single long room. This way, those who enter the gallery today have the impression of being in a large royal Assyrian throne room with the reliefs along the walls. Since 2012, a new project including the setting up of a second large gallery at the ground floor, mainly with material from in Rud, was started. In addition to the structural walks, the objects have been replaced on suitable supports and within showcases in a continuous sequence. Moreover, opaque glasses were set on the windows in order to shade the room from the too intense light coming from the outside. The great and small pairs of stone human headed winged bowls from Nimrud were moved to the second Assyrian gallery because they were not properly displayed for the visitors. This was a delicate operation, not only because of the weight of the sculptures, but also because one of them had been reassembled from several fragments, making the sculpture potentially more fragile. For the second Assyrian gallery, the aspects related to the presentation of the objects and to the content of the communication had been taken into greater account. A light timeline was collocated at the beginning of the room, showing the ancient chronology and history of Mesopotamia, with references to the main objects exposed in the gallery. Educational panels, in English and in Arabic, on the history of the museum and of the research and on the main historical and artistic developments of Mesopotamia have been specifically designed for this room, both for adults, visitors and for children, for which a version with many illustrations was produced. This latter contains thematic panels designed for the younger visitors, each one in a different color, and referring to the themes dealt with also on other panels or objects in the hall. In a very simple but effective way, children can choose and interact directly with the story told inside the gallery simply by opening and closing drawers. The last project carried out by Italians in the museum, inaugurated in 2017, was the reconstruction of the Musalla, the prayer hall of the lost Madrasa al Mijania. The intervention was inspired by the observation of mistakes in the recomposition of parts of the 14th century Musalla's brickwork, decorative apparatus, that were removed from the monument prior to its demolition in 1946. The fragments were accurate recomposed in a new structure based on the available documentation. The museum's second courtyard, next to the Islamic gallery, proved to be the most uh, suitable place for this reconstruction. A metal structure reproducing the shape of the lost original Musalla was built. Besides, a copy of the wooden portico was erected creating a transition zone between the current Islamic hell and the new Musalla. At the end of February 2015, the Baghdad Museum was officially reopened to the public. It was a strong signal by both the Iraqi and the Italian side in order to affirm the importance of history and the need to protect the common cultural heritage of mankind also and especially considering the barbaric destruction of the last years. Today the museum is again a reference point in the public and cultural life of Baghdad and in general of the entire country, visited by many visitors and classrooms.